Hey Art Nerds, today I'm finally getting around to the field test for my Derwent Graffitant Half Pans. I'll link the original unboxings watch in the description for you guys below if you're interested in how these handle. Now I had to pull out some tricks to get this piece to work, so I'm going to walk you guys through the process as well as review the Graffitant Half Pans. So you guys might notice over on the left hand side that I also have the Derwent Ink Tense half pans and those are really crucial for this field test to work at all. Now if you hear a lot of background noise I'm actually sitting outside enjoying a beautiful Louisiana fall day while narrating this so any environmental sounds you hear are coming from the recording in post. So after the initial unboxing swatch, I was really at a loss for what I could do with these for a field test. They don't really handle the way other muted color palettes have handled and they didn't really have the sort of properties that I was really looking for. I was also kind of frustrated that I couldn't build up colors as much as I would like. Now I was hoping that maybe it was just that experience so I decided to go back and re-swatch doing mass tone as well as gradiated washes and trying to create color mixes and color blends. I'm working on a cellulose watercolor paper. This is the Shapiro Farben pad because I figured I might do my field test on cellulose paper which is you know honestly pretty unusual for me usually I do my field tests on the Stonehenge aqua cold press watercolor paper a cotton rag watercolor paper but I already kind of knew I wanted to do something on my Dora Arts round which is a cellulose pad and I figured it would be better for me to play around with the working properties for this these paints on a cellulose paper similar to the Dora round and that way it wouldn't like any kind of peccadillos these might have wouldn't come as such a surprise so the number one thing I really want to point out during this is that they are much more muted than you might expect compared to the swatches included. So the Graphitint comes with their own printed swatches and those look a lot more vibrant than what you can actually get. It is neat that they do have a color undertone. So it's basically a little bit of Derwent ink tents mixed with some graphite to create these colors. But I found that I couldn't get them dark enough. So for me to do like an ink wash sort of effect, I wouldn't be able to get them as dark as I might have wanted. And I'm also testing out some wet into wet blending to see how those handle. And I just find that they tend to be kind of scrubby, kind of muddy. You can't really get a lot of movement or as much granulation as you might want out of these watercolors. So the two, well, the three things I really wanted, the real, I really hoped for with these Graphitent half pans was erasability since they do contain graphite, which unfortunately they cannot do. I also wanted some sweet granulation because I just love these sort of dusk colors that have a lot of granulation to them. And I was hoping for some really cool, gritty graphite granulation that could really add something special to your art, especially because the ink tents that they're using as a base, the India ink base, is very finely and uniformly milled. So you don't really get a lot of granulation with those. And some graphite granulation would add a lot of interest. And I found that those didn't really, that really didn't happen either. The third thing I was really looking for was color, which it does actually offer. But you guys can see wet into wet and it's drying in hyperlapse now it's not quite as intense as you might hope so i tried introducing some watercolor i um started with the core watercolors because those are really bright watercolors and i tried layering my graphite on top of it and i found that i got more movement than i was really looking for now i apologize for the lack of focus here not super sure what's going on with my camera but you guys can get the basic gist that you can layer graphitant on top of existing watercolors, which is where I got the idea to use the ink tents later on. And I decided to try erasing just one more time. And now you cannot get it to erase, which is a big disappointment for me. So for the field test, I am using a Door Art watercolor round. I reviewed this a while back. This is a round watercolor block that I got on AliExpress and I happen to really like the format. And it's not a bad block. Uh, it is a cellulose watercolor paper, but it can take some watercolor, but it can also take alcohol marker. And I thought it would be really fun and a fun format for the Graphitin. I'm sketching in red lead first, doing my underdrawing, doing constructive human anatomy to kind of build up the form. And since I'm working with these kind of graphite colors, I wanted something that had kind of a Halloween feel, which 
works perfectly since we're in October now. And I wanted to also kind of create a piece that would work well for kind of a monochrome, monotone effect, or a piece that has a lot of dark, a lot of shadows, so that we can really use those graphitant colors. So I am drawing a witch who's holding glowing mushrooms in a dark cavern. And I'm starting with the red lead. I'm gonna ink on top of it using a nib and I'm gonna also use FW's acrylic ink. If you're interested in a tutorial on how I draw cartoony people, I have a bunch of them here on the channel. I hope you guys will check them out. Many of them are in my favorite drawing tutorials playlist, so I'll be sure to link that for you guys down in the description below. Here we have our completed and cleaned up sketch. I erased any extra construction lines I had so that everything's pretty clear. I could just paint it like this, but I wanted to do a lot of layers and sometimes colored leads have a tendency to fade into your paint. So I'm using F, uh, FW acrylic ink. I don't know why my brain just kind of gave up on me and I'm kind of warming up my nib uh, Kind of warming up my wrist to prepare for inking because I don't use a dip pen all that often And I'm using a G nib that has a cage in it And that's just a spring in it that holds extra ink so you don't have to dip as often I'm using a Tachikawa nib holder which is a little bit more comfortable for me than some of the American nib holders and I've had the same nib holder since I was in SCAD so 10 years and I am using a Payne's Gray acrylic ink because I thought it would go well with the graphite this is gonna kind of become an issue a little bit later on I wouldn't say that the FW acrylic ink failed it didn't but rather the opacity of the watercolors of the ink tents and the graphitant tended to obscure my line art so I had to re-ink with a different ink because I finished this piece while I was evacuated for Hurricane Ida and I'm recording the narration after having finally moved into the new home that we just bought As with my drawing tutorials, if you're interested in learning more about inking with a dip pen or even learning which nib might be a good fit for you and your art, I've got a bunch of videos, reviews, and tutorials where I cover just that. So I'll be sure to link my advanced inking playlist down in the description for you guys as well if you're interested in learning more about traditional inking.
And when our inks are finished, I'm going to allow this to dry to cure to bond for the to the paper for at least 24 hours, but in reality, it ended up being a few months before I could get back to this piece. So now we can get to the field test in earnest. I'm removing the clips that held the cover on. Here is the inked piece you guys just saw. It's several months later. Here is the Graphitint paint set. This is what we're definitely reviewing today. And I'm also going to use the original Derwent Inktense paint set for my initial layers of color because what I found with the Graphitint is it really does better if you want more color, if you want a wider range of colors to start with an underpainting. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Inktense. I'm gonna paint kind of my local colors and I'm gonna save developing my shadows for the Graphitint paint set because for me, that was the way I could best make sense of this. And I am sure some of you guys watching are familiar with both of these palettes. If you have a different method of handling the Graphitint paints that works better, please let me know down in the comments. I have some other ideas for things I wanna try out with that set. So first of all, I'm kind of starting my initial toning using the Inktense set. So I'm creating the glow of our glowing mushrooms, and I'm also creating some shadow underpainting using greens and uh, <laughs> darker greens to kind of create some atmosphere and some environment. We've also got some contrasting colors because I'm using purple and reddish purples and pinkish purples to paint the witch's clothes so that it kind of stands out a little bit from the background without standing out too much. Now I reviewed this particular ink tense palette a while back and to be frank I kind of struggled with it then too. There are some problems for me, maybe not for you, there are some handling problems for me regarding opacity and a lack of granulation and inability to lift and rework because it is India ink and it is indelible once it's had a chance to dry, which is actually why I picked it to use today. But it did have some issues that I just couldn't really get to mesh with my normal painting style, especially because I do like some interesting granulation in my work and these just don't have that to offer. I also don't like how they have a tendency to obscure my line art and make my work look a little bit more muddy than it would be. But since I've started re-inking most pieces anyway, it might not be as big of an issue. So mostly I'm just focusing on establishing my local colors. Since the Graphitint doesn't have anything that I feel would work well, for a multicolor. So another thing I thought about regarding the Graphitent is I could definitely do single color monotone illustrations and I think that would work well for me. But having all of those colors, I wanna test and try all of those. So I thought the best way to paint something that looked good and also accurately uh, reflected the abilities of the Graphitent and how I naturally was inclined to use them would be to do a colored underpainting and then tint it later on with the Graphitent. After our underpainting of ink tents had a chance to fully dry, I'm now pulling out the Graphitint set. And to my knowledge, there is just one full Graphitint set, unlike the ink tents, where there's two sets, and then I think you can get a 24 set. And then I know Derwent has also been releasing like pastels, and they've been doing like the line and wash sets, which I would be very interested in trying those out as well. But um, to my knowledge, this is the the color lineup for the Graphitint. And if you're not familiar familiar with this set, it includes autumn brown, russet, meadow, green gray, slate green, ocean blue, steel blue, dark indigo, aubergine, juniper, 
support and graphite gray. And just like links to tutorials and other reviews down in the description below, I will have my show notes for this field test, including the colors in this set and where you can buy them in the description. And I want to point out that if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the tutorials and the reviews that I share here on the channel, then using my Amazon affiliate links is a great way to buy things you were already going to buy at no additional cost to you and help support the work that I'm doing here. If you're not in the mood for shopping, but you still want to support the reviews, the tutorials that I share here, then you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. These kind of tutorials and reviews would absolutely not be possible without the help of my patrons because I use the funds from Patreon to buy new supplies to review. So if you enjoy it, please consider supporting me over there or consider leaving me a big old thumbs up and a comment. So I am starting on the background first um, and kind of building up those glow effects using that, oh man, I guess they call that color meadow. It's kind of a weird yellow green, but the thing about yellows, if you add a little black to them, they always have this eggy kind of green to them. So it could just be a yellow that they've added some graphite to. And while I find I can get some wet into wet diffusion, I find that the Graphitint watercolors just really lose all their oomph as soon as you water them down. So they're not, in my opinion, the best for layering over skin tones because then they just kind of look like a dirty version of that color rather than a very light graphite wash. And I don't generally use a lot of water soluble graphite products and maybe that is you know apparent in this review because I feel like I'm just missing a note here I'm missing a beat here but I do use watercolor constantly I paint just about every day and I was really really excited about Graphitin the the half pans when I first heard about them because I thought the possibilities for these paints was you know pretty incredible So I have to admit, I don't really love the Derwent Ink Tents half pans. I find they are muddy and tend to obscure the line art, but they're indelible once dry and allow for layering without reactivation. I also find it challenging to get darker colors by saturation, mixing, or layering without adding black. At least with the set I have, I know Derwent has a few other sets. Graphitint doesn't really get dark on its own, so to get the really dark shadows, I need to mix in some black from the Ink Tents set. Mostly it seems to offer a bit of sparkle, and that would be the graphite. And the graphitant really obscures the line art as well. So originally I was hoping I could just leave this as the Payne's Gray, but I know I'm going to have to re-ink for clarity. So my goal was to do some local shading using local colors first and then do atmospheric shading while also mixing in some black to get those darker hues. While I am able to accomplish this sort of layering, it's muddy and unimpressive. The graphitin and my usual art style are not really a good match. Maybe something light and mo uh, monochromatic like the pieces I did using the Boko Undo Sumiask set. And the only part I really like right now is the neat color shift I was able to achieve with the background but even another layer of color could just totally obscure that. At the time I was painting this, I also felt like I couldn't really capture the moody and somewhat granulating piece that I had in my head. As with most India ink based watercolors, I can only go so dark before it bottoms out to a flat matte saturation. Maybe delicate monochromatic ink washes are a better fit, but I'm really struggling with this. The inability to get really dark and saturated while maintaining translucency is kind of a deal killer for me, and it's why I tend to prefer more granulating watercolors over more more finely milled watercolors. They just have a tendency to get really opaque on me. And as I was painting this, I felt like it was just kind of a muddy mess. I was frustrated that I couldn't build up layers the way I wanted to, and the color gets obscured. Even introducing black doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm sure there are better ways to handle graphitin, and this was probably just too heavy handed, but at least I can demonstrate what to try to avoid and what these cannot do well. So I am narrating this in post, and having had several weeks in between me painting this and me narrating this, a lot of that frustration has kind of dissipated, and I actually think this, this piece is nice 
if lacking in contrast, if lacking in saturation. So I do feel a little bit differently about the piece itself, but I agree with past me that these are not necessarily going to give me the depth of color or the depth of shadow or the granulation that I want. And you can't really see it in the video, but you could see it in real life. So much of the line work gets totally covered up by how pink, how opaque the ink tents and graphitant are. Just alone, individually, they're fairly opaque without a lot of that neat color sparkle you get with the translucency of watercolor. So for me, and I said this in my ink tents review, I feel like these have kind of a deadness to them that might work okay for underpainting, but doesn't necessarily work so well as a standalone piece. So here I'm trying to build up that background and get more saturation. And another point of frustration and disappointment is that they will go down the color I want, the depth, the intensity that I want, but as they dry, they just really flatten out, which is kind of frustrating. And the graphitant really pollutes the water and rinse cup. So you need to be sure to rinse your cup thoroughly before using any other watercolors or you're still gonna have some of that graphite in your water. Really, I recommend using two cups, two water cups when you're painting, one for dirty, one for clean. But I'm working with very limited space here and when I'm in that kind of a situation, I usually default to just one and constantly changing out my rinse water. So in the daisy palette, you guys can see, I kind of created a universal shadow color that I'm now using to kind of create some atmospheric shading and to add additional depth to this piece so it doesn't feel quite so flat. And am I the only one who feels kind of guilty when I can't seem to love an art supply that seems to work well for other artists? Am I, am I the only one who is frustrated when I can't find a way to get it to work for me. Usually I assuage this guilt by setting it aside, allowing time to pass and skill to increase and revisiting it later. And I did do that with the graphitant and I will do it again. I will give it probably a couple more chances because it just seems really promising and it just seems like I, I haven't necessarily hit on a good way that works for me to use it. So I'm gonna keep trying it because I do see, so usually when I just absolutely hate an art supply, it tends to be with good reason. There, I can tell, oh, I can tell the difference between this just isn't for me and I still think it's good or still worth it for other artists and me thinking something is just absolutely not your, worth your money and not being able to recommend it. And I do think Graphitint has a lot of promise. I think I'm just not using it in a way that really reflects what it's supposed to be able to do or I'm not really the right artist for it. Uh, maybe some line and wash would be a better fit. At this point I was really frustrated that I wasn't building up the shadow and the depth that I really wanted to so I am using black mixed with a little bit of the graphite gray to try to get those really nice darker punchier shadows to get some more contrast going on here and to me that's like my number one complaint is that I just can't get the color depth and contrast that I really want. I could live, I could live, I could deal with everything's granulated the same amount so you can't really get any interesting granulation effects. I could deal with the fact that the graphitant, the graphite isn't a little bit grittier, doesn't really stand out more. It's even though you can tell there's graphite there, it really reads more as muddy. But the thing that like kind of gets me is I just can't build up up the saturation that I really want with this and that's what's really frustrating for me but maybe I'll go out and get the second intent set and see if those additional colors really add the legs that I need to be able to paint what I'm looking to paint.
And hopefully throughout this time lapse, you guys can see what I'm talking about, about the colors go down a good saturation and then they dry much less saturated, much less dark. So it's really hard to build up the sort of shadows you might want. If you're someone who does really light watercolor illustrations, ink tents and graphitent might be great for you. So I didn't just buy these to rag on them. I really, really love the Derwent ink tents watercolor pencils. They're one of my favorite, well, I say watercolor in quotes, India ink pencils. I really love them. I use them all the time and initially I was really hoping I would love the ink tents half pans as much as I love the pencils and I was really excited for the graphitant because I really love super granulating watercolors that can add a lot of visual interest to your work. I really think I prefer just straight out super granulating watercolors like the Van Gogh dust colors or Daniel Smith's lunar colors or the supervision super granulating colors to the graphitant. I think those are my preference. There isn't enough of what I want delicacy or granulation or the ability to build up contrast or the ability to erase or transparency and there's too much of what I don't really value the graphite sheen indelibility once dry for these to be a good fit for me so to kind of clean this up add some of that contrast back into it and kind of fix what was obscured by layers and layers of India ink. I'm just re-inking with a Sakura Pigma FB because I didn't have the Payne's Gray handy. So what are the pros of the graphitant watercolor pans? They're indelible once dry and you get some beautiful muted colors. What are the cons? Graphite is too finely granulated, so it just makes it muddy. Different amounts of granulation would make it more visually interesting. So what's my verdict? Well, in the end, it's probably just not for me, at least how I paint now and how I think about illustration of watercolor. It doesn't mean it'll never be for me. It just means this approach isn't really what I was looking for. I could have done this with the Van Gogh dust colors and gotten way closer to what I wanted. I haven't yet hit a technique that I feel resonates with these unusual watercolors, but I promise you guys I'll keep trying and I'll try to share the results with y'all if y'all are interested. So if you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Becca. I'm a watercolor comic artist and I also review com watercolors for fun. And uh, th this is it. This is the finished piece. It's actually in post having allowed a couple weeks to pass by. I don't think it looks too bad, but I'd love to revisit this with a similar technique with the uh, Van Gogh dusk colors and see if I can't make something that I like even more. So if you guys found this review to be helpful, useful, and informative, I really ask that you leave me a big old thumbs up and a comment down in the comment section. I also hope you guys will check out the description because I'll have helpful links, the materials used, as well as my show notes down in the description for you guys to follow along. Even though I was kind of frustrated while working on this, I also had a lot of fun because it was really a challenge to get what I wanted and I had to really experiment and play around with things and try to be flexible to create a piece that I enjoyed. I do have a line art available for this piece if you would like to print it out and color along and that'll be available to my patrons on Patreon at, again, patreon.com slash soup. If you guys would like to check out my comic, 7-inch Kara, or more of my art, I'll have links to those in the description as well. I really hope you guys will check them out and get a feel for what I'm doing. So hopefully I'll see you guys again in the near future. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope this will help you guys make art a habit because sometimes there's just art materials that are good and other people like and they just don't hit it for you. So hopefully this was helpful for y'all. If y'all have any suggestions for other techniques I should try out with either the ink tents or the graphitant, let me know down in the comments. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys!
Oh, you guys are still around? Well, I want to give a huge thanks one more time to my amazing patrons on Patreon who help make reviews like this possible. I really could not do it without you guys, and I would have quit a while back if it weren't for your support. So really, truly, and honestly, it means the world to me, especially as a smaller YouTuber. That kind of support is the only reason I still have time to purchase supplies to review and share the reviews to the public. So thank you guys so, 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 so much. If you guys stick around, you'll see their awesome names listed in just a moment. And I will also have some cool video ga videos for you guys to check out in the cards. So hopefully you guys will check them out after you finish this video. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.